Good evening. It's good to see you again tonight on this Thursday night. Uh, every night is the same. It's a good night. It's a night from the Lord and, uh, and He is the light in the night. So, uh, so don't worry about the night. We're just here to listen, to, uh, come on, to uh, accumulate and to, <clears throat> and to rest tonight. Tonight we're talking about church and kingdom. This may sound uh, on average not to be a, let's, let's say, a very positive uh, uh, let's say uh, training tonight, but it is actually very positive, you'll see to it but we need to define uh, the church thing for ourselves before we can go on to the, to the next step, the next one is we're going to talk about congregation and kingdom so, so, it's, it's, so tonight we look at this whole church thing and when we talk about the church thing, I think it's very important you know that uh, we must understand that God says that Everyone that gets to know Him becomes part of the bride of Christ or the body of Christ. We are a member of the body of Christ. We'll come to it to the definition of church and whatever. And it's a very important verse of scripture in, in Corinthians. I can't remember it exactly now. I think it's Corinthians 1 Corinthians 3 or 6. That's, that's saying that um, in Afrikaans say, Hy wat die lichaam skend, God sal hom skend. He that, uh, what is the word? Harms the body. He that harms the body, God will harm him. I, say, I always say this is the most devastating scripture actually in the Bible. Because you know, if you become an enemy of the body of Christ, you become an enemy of God in a certain sense. Uh, if you can say it like that, you will, you will, God will deal with you personally. So whatever we say, we must say it very carefully because we are not here to just criticize things. And just leave it there, you know, and we have found a new theology or a new concept, you know. And, and luckily we can now uh, we criticize something and it is wrong, you know, but we don't have a solution. And at the end of the day, we don't contribute to a new paradigm. We can't, don't contribute to something of bigger unity, of bigger effect, of more, more fruit and whatever uh, at the end of the day. So in saying this, I want to say it immediately, I've got immense respect for the body or for the bride of Christ. But that is not necessarily the church. So when I talk about church, I mean most people make it equal to each other, but I don't think it is equal to each other. Because my definition of church is not equal the body of Christ or the bride of Christ. Uh, my definition of what we'll see about church is that it is something we have built as man to sort of accommodate the bride or this body of Christ in our own hunger for, for the presence of God that is the real thing because it's the bride that must be with the bridegroom you know it's the body of Christ it is, it is having a father you know and bringing back the kingdom and everything but, but in that in man, we've said in man's struggle with the kingdom that he's lost himself there came an immense hunger and a dissatisfaction in him you know, to find himself, to, to find again what was lost, but he couldn't define what was lost. So he started to start to build things, you know, to sort of get a hold on things and whatever. And along the road, Jesus was, was revealed, you know, and, and we've accepted Jesus, you know. And we have started churches, we've planted churches, as we've always said it to ourselves. I've been planted various churches in my life. A um, long time, I've spent many, many years of my life, we've spent in planting churches. But as we've been doing this, you know, we, we, we sort of start to find out, you know, but the thing is not really working as it's maybe supposed to be, as to what we thought it would be, as what we read in the Bible. Somewhere there's something not really working, you know. But we're all very honestly and uh, with integrity sort of involved in this whole thing. But eventually at the end of the day you deal with a lot of things because you find, you, uh, I've never found a group of people so dis with so full of disappointment and problems as congregation leaders. Mm. Mm. I said to myself, but this is supposed to be to the position or role in the world, you know what I mean. Can you be more happy in this world than to be a congregation leader and a... You know, because this is the cream of the cream and everything. And I've never found people with more problems than congregation leaders. And I, I, I just realized along the way, but there's, there's something wrong somewhere. There's something drastically wrong, but it is so deeply hidden, sort of for my own eyes, eyes that it took me 30, 33 years 
to come to the place to put my hand upon it and say, but you know, this is what is wrong. And the wrong doesn't lie in the body of Christ or the members of the, of, of, of the body of Christ. The problem lies in how do we deal with these, these members of Christ. How do we deal with these believers, you know, because it's one person coming to Christ, another one, we become 2, 10, you know, 20, 11, 50, 200, 2000, you know. And how do we function together? And, and, and we have said to ourselves, you know, that we must organize these people, we must bring them together in groups, we must look after them to see that they don't get astray, you know, they keep to the right doctrine, you know, uh, and uh, uh, we, must, we must help them to deal with the sin problem and all these things, and we must get, a, as fivefold ministry, we must get a vision from God so that we can give it to them so that they can fall into the vision and they can volunteer and we can work together and that we can take the town for the Lord, but for that we need a separate place, you know, where we can come together and where we can do the thing. The interesting thing is, you know, in the Old Testament, the, 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 the Jewish religion, if you can say it like that, because it was in a certain sense actually a religion, uh, was always in the synagogue, but the synagogue was seen as what we maybe know today as a, a community center of the town. You know, everyone could come there, everyone, that was like the center point of the community. Everyone, every, everything was flowing out of that place. The whole community was sort of administrated out of that place. It was more than even a city hall, you know. It was the community place where we come together, we sit together, we talk about education, about the role of the man and the wife, and, and you know, what happens in town and everything. Everything was discussed and, and, and sorted out and organized from each other or between each other from the synagogue. So the synagogue played a very big role, much bigger than what we have as church today. We say, yes, church is a place where the, the life of the Christians are sort of ruled from, but definitely is the society not very much worried about what's going on there because they don't want even to go there. I mean, if you want to look where society on Sunday, go to the malls, you will find them there. Go to the park runs and whatever, they're there. They, they, they just say, what, what, what's the point? It's not for us, you know, we're not supposed to go there. It is just a certain group of people that agree to, to attend there. So we, we sit with a manifestation of, of church that we said we plant something, we organize something. But eventually this thing is not really healing the town, bringing the town together. This thing is not really persuading the people, the non-believers, you know, that this is a beautiful value and a beautiful culture and we need to uh, adapt to that and get it into our own lives. Uh, actually, when I go into a town, I find that uh, more and more a total, uh, what is it, a versi, a version or what, what is it, towards church to say, but no man, there's no way you get away from church, you run away from church. In the modern times, as in as now, we never had a time in the history of man where people got to know the Lord as much as now, especially in the, in the Arab world. But we've never had a time in history where churches have closed down like now. It's like 1,500 a month in America. It's enormously, there's about, that's, they say there's daily about 3,200 and something people leaving church every day in America. Every day. We've got an enormous movement out of the church as we know church in the world. Yet we have a total revival in the world in terms of people coming to God. So how on earth does this thing come together? And we, we don't like it and we, we fight it and we say we must save the thing, we must save the church buildings. But in the meantime we don't ask the question if this is not maybe God. Because I believe this is God. God is busy doing something. There are actually at the moment more, more believers outside uh, church structures in America than inside church structures. And, and, and they're living in a rate that's, that's uh, unprecedented in history. But yet, but yet at the end of the day, we, we, when I fellowship with congregation leaders, I don't even hear sort of the question, you know, you know, is there, is there not maybe something wrong, you know? We just say, no, we need to save the thing, we need to go on, you know, we need, 
what, 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 you know, because they, they, they tell you, you know, church is God's plan to save the world. I said, no, church is not God's plan to save the world. Jesus is God's plan to save the world. Yeah, but, but you know, we've, we've got Jesus is the water for the world, you know, but we need, a, we need a, a, a glass, you know. We can't take the water to people if there's not a glass. And the glass is the church. See, now the, the church is not, the glass is not the church. The individual believer is the glass. Because God lives and stays in individual people. He doesn't stay in church. It all depends, you know, if you, if you define church as only people, okay, then it is church. But church is not normally defined as only people. It's defined as a combination of people and structures together, but where the structure normally takes over and the people are ruled by the structure. And I'm not here to be, you know, negative about the past and whatever, but we need to understand that the difference between church and congregation is a paradigm difference. It is not just a slight difference. It is not just like two words with playing, you know, synonyms and whatever. A paradigm is a very strong thing. You know, I, I always remember I once heard a video of, a, of paradigms. They say that in a, uh, it's like the Old and the New Testament. The, 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 uh, the best of the old paradigm doesn't fit into the new paradigm. Because it's not good enough. That's why the Bible even says, you know, that the smallest in the kingdom of God, Matthew uh, 11 verse 11, of, in the kingdom of God in the New Testament, after the resurrection, the smallest is bigger than the biggest in the Old Testament, namely John the Baptist. I mean, the smallest believer in the New Testament starts out in a bigger level of everything than the biggest person in the Old Testament. Why? Because it's a paradigm difference. There's not even an overlap, if you can say it like that. You know, if, if, if this thing goes here and this one goes from there, there, you know, there's not even an overlap. You know, you can't even bring the two together. And that's the main thing with a paradigm, is that you cannot use the old paradigm to build a new paradigm. You need to basically leave the old paradigm, and I don't want to say destroy the old paradigm, but you, you need to leave it because it, it, it can't help you in the new paradigm. The best of the old paradigm is a problem in the new paradigm. Because it doesn't fit into the new paradigm. You see, but it is not that in old paradigms there was not good stuff. There was good stuff, but it was good for that time. And God goes through a time of restoration through all the ages. You know, there was a time in the, what we have as the uh, Reformation. I mean, people say, oh, the Reformation, the Reformation. I mean, the Reformation was, was one enormous, what was it, miracle in times of, you know, the, the, the 1500s and... But it is no longer the miracle because lots of things have been restored since yet. We cannot stay there. There's lots of things that get restored. Yes, it's, it's that stuff old and we just throw it on and no. But things have drastically changed. When you really do your study, you know, in terms of history, what really happened in, in the Reformation, I mean, you wouldn't believe what happened. I mean, the people that led the Reformation at, 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 at wars with each other, physical wars. I mean, a guy like Calvin has killed, uh, have killed his own biggest uh, theological enemy. <laughs> mm. I mean, that's stuff that happened, you know. If ordered him to kill him, you know, they said, my goodness. But, you know, I don't want to be hard on the guy, but, you know, in those days, things were really bad. Things were just all over each other, you know. There was no order, really, you know. It was still only war, you know. So, so it's not for me to be the judge of that time. But you know, God used the people. But times have changed. And we are now in a different time. And it is not that we throw away what is the past. Because no one of us will be today here if it wasn't for the good of the old paradigms that we came through. Mm. Um, I mean, I am, a, I am a, let's say, a, in brackets, a product of the Dutch Reformed Church. And I'm not standing here today and I am angry at them and I just want to kill them or whatever, you know. Because I to, I, 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 there was beautiful things there. There was things that I learned there that was beautiful. But, but unfortunately, it couldn't bring my life to what it is today. 
because of various different reasons. Because there's a, there's a tendency in that structure not to change. And we must change. We must go on. God is on the move. And God wants to move to people. And we cannot just sit here and, and build a structure and defend, defend a structure and spend our energy in the structure. Because God is not in a structure. God is in a movement. The new paradigm, the congregation paradigm, the, is, is a part of the kingdom paradigm. That is a movement. A movement is something totally different than from a structure, institutionalized structure. Church is an institutionalized structure. Because it is built like a business system. You can go and see, read my stuff there in, in, on the internet, congregationwise.co.za, the two systems. We've said there's two systems on earth. There's a family system where we package people with relationship. There's a business system where we package things with money and systems and departments and logistics and whatever. No one is wrong. Because in the one is the relationship and the other one is money. You need to win m relationship and money in this world. But you never take people and you package them in, in a business structure. Because the business structure is a good structure for things, but not for people. In the moment, I mean, we have roles in the, in the family uh, structure. We have positions in the business structure. Is positions in essence wrong? No, it's not wrong. When we function together, we need positions. But when we are a family, we relate always through a role. You don't build any, any time in your whole life, you never build relationships through position. You build it through your role. I don't sit with my child and I constantly remind him of I'm the head of the home. You know, I can throw you out of the home. I've got a final authority. You know, you've got no say here. You know, I pay for everything. I mean, I don't constantly talk that thing, although it is that, although that's the fact. The point is, you won't, you won't never win his heart that way. Because it doesn't matter for him. He's not there to worry about, you know, who's paying what around here because he's, he's, he's in a phase where he's looking for himself, you know, he's looking for relationship and he wants me as a father to come in the role of a father through relationship and, and my heart to connect with his heart. And everywhere where life flow from one heart to another heart, we have congregation life. We have congregation. That's it. It can be in a building, it can be in a outside a building, it can be alongside a swimming pool, it can be in a car. It doesn't matter what is the surrounding. Everywhere where life flows from one heart to another heart, it is congregation. And that is what congregation is all about. Nothing more. You know, I, 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 you get in your car, you come and visit me, you know, we have a nice time, you know, week after week we sit and we fellowship and whatever. And, and you know, after maybe five, six weeks we say, you know, we have such a beautiful relationship now. You know, but the point of the point is the car has made it possible for you to come here and have the relationship. But the car become never part of the relationship. The car is only a means. It's only something that helps you. And we need this stuff to help us. We're not against any building, any car, any program, any nothing. But listen, it's, it only remains means. The mean never becomes the thing. And in church we have found a place where we are so busy with the structure and the positions and the money and the, and the programs and, and the organization that there's no time really left for relationship. It's constantly like that. I've been planting churches my whole life long. And you can try it where, however you want to do it. The moment you plant it in a, in, a, in, a, the business, in a business structure, you end up there. Because this whole thing demands you to service the system. And then it becomes, uh, it becomes the enemy of the, 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 there's a time competition, you know. And to build a system you need time. So you take time from your relationships and you build systems. Are any of the systems wrong? No, but it doesn't fit. People are not here for systems. They are here for relationship. People don't feel special because they are something in a system. Therefore, you find in church this competition to be in the highest position. You know, to have the control. In church, we have control. We have departments. We have structures. 
Uh, and that doesn't make it wrong, but you can't put people in that structure. Our problem in the Western world is that we don't know how to build a family structure when we come to 80, 100, 120 people. We don't know. Uh, we've lost it. And it's actually very easy. We'll come to that next week. Uh, and then we move this 80 people, you know, over to this business structure. We appoint a, a final leader that hears from God what is the vision for us and what we will believe and how we will do it. And then he puts the thing on the table and we volunteer to do the vision and we then together build the church. But in the meantime, we're not here to build the church. And the church become an intermediate thing between, between, uh, uh, between me and God. I mean, just last night uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we sat here with people that said, but listen, they tell me that, that uh, I'm a disobedient member because I don't do what the pastor say me I must do. Because he's got the say over me. He's got the control over me. Well, if you are in a business, that's true. But we are not in a business. Yes, if you attend tomorrow and you work for a guy there at McDonald's and he bought McDonald's, listen, then you must do what he's telling you because he bought it. You know, he built it. But you know, no, no one of us has built the body of Christ. No one of us has paid anything for each other. We've paid nothing for each other. You know, in the, in the family world, we are brothers and sisters. We've got different roles. Yes, that's not wrong. But you know, if you call yourself a father, you are the one that goes down and take people and lift them up. It's not like the business structure. You go over the people, you tell them, look after me, you know, and, and, and serve me. And uh, pay me, you know, and I draw a salary out of you, you know, that's business. That, it's a different thing, you know, to, for the privilege of being a father of three children. You, you every day go to work, you serve, you pay, you everything. You're the one that's suffering the most for the privilege to be the father. Because that's what fatherhood is all about. That's what family is all about. In the meantime, God says, this is what I've done all the years, and I will help you, I will sustain you. But you cannot make money in the, in the, in the family system. You're not supposed to make money there. Uh, is there lots of money flowing in the, in the family world? Of course there's money flowing. There's always money flowing there. But I'm not making money out of people. I don't ask them for money. They can, they can sow, yes, but if they don't sow, then it's also fine. I make my money by going out in the day and I do property. I, I, I get my money there. I do deals, you know, and it's in the light, it's on paper, you know. I don't tell them the gospel and tell them, listen, you need, to, you need to give me a tithe because I'm preaching to you. No. And I'm against tithes. No, I'm not against tithes. I'm, I'm, I'm believing in more than tithes. You know, but it is something that must flow out of your heart. It must flow between people. It must flow to people. It must not flow to programs and structures. Uh, uh, on average, you know, and on average in the church world, I'm coming from there, at least 90% of everything goes into structures and salaries and programs. At least 90%. You know, that, that, that's, that's, that's the reality. Mm. And we need to decide, we need to say to ourselves, you know, that it does not change anything by being against it and, you know, criticize it and whatever. You just need to define it for yourself, get clarity for yourself, and start to rebuild the whole thing in your own life without, uh, uh, without just being negative and reactive and whatever. But we must understand that the origin of church actually, actually has found its origin in the fact that there is a hungry man for the presence of God. So therefore we have meetings, and guess what? We always talk, you know, I can feel the presence of God. People like it, because they come for the presence of God. You know, but they go home and they think God's not present there. You know, they go to Israel because God is present there. But God is, I mean, you brought God into the place, I mean. You yourself brought God there, I mean. It's not a question of because of the pastor in front God is there. God is everywhere in the world, and God is especially where you are. And it's not wrong. It's all about the presence of God. It's of course about the presence of God. And it's of course that it can be that in a meeting God can be present and very present and manifesting. Of course it can be like that. You know, but God is not only in meetings. 
If God is only in a Sunday meeting, you know, my goodness, I mean, what are we doing? God is everywhere, all the time. So, but we, we organize things where God is especially present. And we create a, a thing where people go home, and this is secondary, you know, this is a war and a fight and a, you know, this is bad and this is evil, you know. And we, we suffer through the whole week till we get into this, this paradigm of heaven Sunday, uh, you know, when we again experience God. That's not, that's not what God had in mind. God had in mind a kingdom where He is the King, where you, are, where you are the Son of the King, where we live together, we do together, we stay together, we everything together. Where? In the church, now in your life. And if you attend some sort of conference or meeting or training like now, you know, it's fine. But this is nothing more special. This is only like a, a I always say like a, what is it? A vitamin. A vitamin, you know, something that just gives you some more energy, you know, so that you can go and live the thing that you are supposed to live. Mm. You cannot come and live with me. You cannot come and do my thing. I cannot go and do your thing. Mm. Yeah, but we must do it together. Since when we must do it together? The interesting thing is that, that the places where the body of Christ is growing the fastest and the, the biggest and whatever are are the countries in the world where we have the least organized institutionalized church. Mm. Now do you think that is, do you think that is uh, uh, by accident? No, it's because of that. Mm. The more we as human beings control the thing, and the more we keep the people busy, and the more we real meetings, we organize meetings, and, and let them do it, and you know, and they spend their money and their time and their energy there, the more they don't have time to reach out to unbelievers. The more they have less time to spend with the family and everything else. You see, and the, prob the biggest problem with church is the following. That it became a third structure in society. It is not even a business structure. It looks like the business structure, but it is not in itself part of the business world. It becomes a third structure. But you know, the people, at, the people in the family and the people in the business and the people in the church are all the same people. And therefore, these three structures are all competing for the same money, the same time and the same energy. Mm. And people feel that, you know, when I serve God in this church structure, you know, this is, this is very spiritual. This is for God. You know, the best place to serve God is at home. You will never be greater than what you are at home. That is the purpose. That is what congregation is all about. Is to start at home. To start in your life. To start then in your marriage. Then in your children. Then to your workplace and whatever. Church is not supposed to be a third structure that competes with the other two. It's supposed to, you, to dissolve and become part of this two. That is the only two that God has started up. Because God's kingdom it's all about two things. It is a king with a father heart. It is a government and it is a, and it is a, a relationship. That is what God's kingdom is all about. Because relationship in government always goes together. You cannot have relationship if you do not have governmental order. The moment there's governmental order and we know, okay, this is now my house, you know, and that, that's your car, and this is this, you know, and we've... You know, the moment it's order, we can relax and have relationship. Therefore, you will always have government and the relationship together. Therefore, you will always have do these two systems together. The interesting thing is that God never started, let's say, the business system. Because in the, par in the, paradi in the paradise, there was no business. Everything was for free. But the business system is a, is a, is a shadow of the governmental business system, of the governmental system, if you can say it like that. It's not a wrong thing if it operates with the right values and morals of God's government. You know, you understand, that's, that's a byproduct of the fall of man. But it fits into this governmental thing of order and structure and whatever, it's a... Uh, uh, it, you know, therefore, when you start up a business, you know, you get the the right account, you get the right business, you know, the right uh, paperwork, you know, because it's a governmental thing. Money starts to flow. We're making money. But in the process, we, we, we are involved with people. And when we are involved with people, the relationship is the main thing. Because people are in their deepest core relational beings. 
Yes, they are in a world and in a kingdom that is a governmental structure. But inside themselves, they are in essence relational beings because they are not separated from each other. They flow into each other's lives. And that flow of life is called congregation life. That's what it is. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter to whom it is. The moment you flow, then it is, then it is, then it is uh, congregation life. Okay. Uh, so, so religion, religion, we said, was the thing that started, that man started, as an as a attempt to, to find the presence of God again, to serve God again, to bring God back, uh, and to sort of, to reach back to God, or whatever it might be. Uh, but, but in religion, we've started up various types of, types of religion, all religions are basically the same, when you study religion, You'll see all of them, they work on the same basis, you know. It, it starts with the, the sin problem. It starts with you need to, to, to make a decision. You, not, you, you become part of an exclusive group. Then you are, all the other groups are enemies. We don't mingle with each other. We don't attend each other's conferences, you know. We, we, we show very much commitment to our group, you know, and to our leader. And we, we praise our leader, you know, the, the human leader. You know, and, and we, we separate from each other, you know. We say that we we brothers, you know, but we don't we don't believe it, you know. We don't live like that because in essence we are more enemies of each other because we're fighting for, for members, we're fighting for money, we're fighting for a reputation of being the best religion. You know, and the religion can go so far that it can say we must kill the other people, you know. And in killing them, you know, you get free ticket. In the, on this side, I mean, there's no end to what religion can be. But when you study religion, you will see that religion and what we have as denominationalism is basically the same thing. There's basically no difference. Uh, we, we, we organize it the same way, we administrate it the same way uh, at the end of the day. I believe there is no intermediate structure between man as the believer, the office of the believer, and Jesus Christ. We, because it is the king and all the other kings. But church has become an intermediate thing where we, where we group people together with certain doctrine, certain this, certain whatever, so that we can have a certain uh, purpose, you know, and, and at the end of the day it is not always reaching the, you know, the kingdom or other people, it's reaching people to come here. To serve us here and to be part of this thing. Okay, so it's interesting, you know, when you ask Google you, and you uh, and you ask, you know, the, uh, give me pictures of church, they will always give you uh, buildings. When you ask Google, give me pictures of congregation, they give you people. Now Google knows something. The word church is a is a Greek word that's never used in the Bible. Kuriakon. It means to belong to the to the Lord. It's not a wrong concept. The fact is, Jesus definitely knew about the word, but he preferred never to use it. Why? Because there's a definite reason for that. And we'll come to that. There's a verse of scripture saying in 1 Corinthians 4 verse 6 that we must not think above what is written. You know, people say, oh, well, you make an issue about church and congregation, you know. Everyone is using the word church, let's use it. I say, okay, that's fine. I don't want to make an issue about it. But there still is a difference between the two. We can't make progress as long as we stick to the old paradigms and we don't get out of the paradigms. I mean, I mean coming out of theological seminary, what I've seen, where people start to, to use the words, you know, and we also, okay, that's fine. I mean, I had a professor that, that could give a class in Afrikaans that you don't know what is the subject, what it is dealing with. You don't know what, not even talking what he's talking about. You don't know what is the, the, the heading of the subject. You don't know what he's talking about. You know, because he, he's so building up words, he's so good with words, you know, and so framing words and he's touching it to the Bible, and no one knows what he's saying, and then we leave the class and then everyone says, oh, this guy is very spiritual. I said, no, he's not spiritual. He, I tour with your mind. He's, he's just tour with your mind. He's very good in words, but he's actually saying nothing. Absolutely nothing. You're just in awe in, to, to his talent in creating words. Because he creates words, I mean that you can, you, you only see the us and the ak and you know, but the other words is totally new words. You don't know where you're getting it from. 
And it's true. You know, and, and when you cannot talk with a guy like that because you don't know what he's talking all about. And we get so used to this thing, you know, in the theological world that we create words and, and concepts, you know, and we don't stick to the plain thing of the Bible. If the Bible does not word, use the word church, why do we use it? The Bible used the word congregation. It's a different, separate word with a different meaning. I mean, of course Jesus knew. So there was a reason for that, you know, but we just wash it off the table because we're so into the church thing that we don't want to have all the... What is it? All the effort to maybe get out of the thing and rebuild it. So we just keep on with it. Especially if you are the leader and you are financially dependent upon it, then there is not very much motivation to change the thing. Uh, so it is not synonymous uh, at the end of, of, of the day. We get confused along the way. You know, we plant a church, but you never plant a family. You grow a family. You know, everything in congregation and in family is organic, it is relational, it grows, it flows, it's hard, it is, it is, it is, it, it melts, you know, it can, it can, it can become one with each other. But the stuff in church is rigid, you know. I've been, I've, so many times I've been joining a church and they say, you know, let's be clear about, you know, in this church relationship is never on the table, you know, we will, we will never, we will never, Go back to our commitments as what we have relationally towards each other as believers. And, you know, and then the first time came where you differ from them theologically, then they tell you you need to leave. I said, but you told me there's no relationship on the table. No, if you don't believe, if you don't, if you don't agree with us, you must leave. You cannot be part of us when you don't agree with us. I said, but how on earth do you understand that? That means that the theological side and the Structural side is more important than the relationship. Mm -hmm. No, it's not, but it is. You ask me to go out of your life. I'm a brother. You know, you can't say I've sinned or whatever. I'm just not agreeing with you. And then you ask me to lead out of relationship. Because that is what denominationalism and religion and church is doing. It separates all the time. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you of about four or five new churches in Pretoria in the last month. I mean... We're just starting new ones and new ones and new ones. And guess why we're doing it? It's not because it's a better way to, 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 uh, to live the kingdom or to reach the unbelievers. No, it's because they said, we always differ from the previous one. There was always a fight. Therefore, we live. Always. All of them. Mm. But you don't, we don't talk about it because it's okay. It's not okay. It means that we are going into this unity more and more and more and more. And we ignore it and we are willing to build on that disunity as long as we can get a salary. It's not, it's not a biblical way. If whatever you believe about church or congregation does not bring more unity and more flow. I mean, I can work as I stand here. I don't matter. I can work with every person in every denomination. Why? Because my union with that person is not based on theology. It's not based on denomination. It's not based on anything else except that we've got the same Father. We've got the same King. We've got the same Kingdom. And I'm not your judge to tell you that your theology... Yes, if you say Christ is not the way, okay, I will really differ from you. But you know, I've got my opinion about you know, where the sin problem fits in. But, but if you still believe sin is the main thing, it's fine. I can be your brother. You know, I've got no reason to not be your brother. And to distantiate me from you because you still believe that every person is guilty before they accept Christ. I don't believe any person is guilty on earth. But in saying it, I say, okay, I'm, God will walk the way of you with me, but let's just keep on fellowshipping, let's just work together and see what happens. I mean, because it's not, I'm not the truth and you're not the truth. I mean, so God is the truth. We're not here to change each other. I'm not here to change you. I'm not, you cannot join me and I'm not joining you. We, we've joined the same body. I can see that you've accepted Christ. I can hear that the Holy Spirit is living in you. So we're part of one family. If I like you or I do not like you, whatever your color may be or whatever your area may be or whatever your language may be, it doesn't matter because we're part of one family. I am in unity with you. I just need to find a unity. I must just get rid of the, the, the things that bring this unity between me and you. So it's not a problem for me to work together with people because 
I've got, I've got rid of all the things I need to defend. I need to defend this and this and this. Listen, I only, I only stand for the kingdom and for the king and for the son. There's nothing else you need to stand for. I mean, there's nothing else you need to give your life for, if you can say it like that. Because churches are, uh, churches are rigid, you know. It, 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 it brings, the, the heart of church is separation. It always separates, separates, bring more this unity. I've seen it. I've been working in a hundred towns in, in South Africa. I've planted churches in lots of towns. I couldn't find in 30 years any town that became more in unity because of planting a church there. Mm. No way. Mm. No way. It doesn't say that all the churches we plant, you know, is, is let's say rubbish, you know. Or, that, that was beautiful thing, beautiful things happening there. You even find beautiful relationships between people in churches. But the church thing does not work. Mm. It is the relationships that work. You know, at the church and the meeting and whatever, you can get exposure, get to le le learn and meet a lot of people. You know, that's beautiful stuff. It's not wrong in essence. But the program and the structure does not bring a bigger unity in town. Mm. It just separates more and more and more. And on average, people stay three to five years at one church, then they move to another church. Why? I mean, if it's so... If it's so the final thing of the final thing, why on earth are people doing this church hopping thing all, all life long? Mm. I mean, even in Pretoria, they move from one church to the other, one church to the other. We're just circulating believers. That's all we do, mainly. But that's not what the kingdom is all about. The kingdom is not accommodating believers and circulating them and whatever. The kingdom is about helping people to find their kingdom and build their kingdom so that they can become effective in their kingdom. Mm. And, and, and the, the first thing is not to come and join me because we join nothing. We've joined the body of Christ when we've accepted Jesus Christ. Mm. There's nothing else you need to join. You need to join nothing else. But you know, because of this intermediate membership thing, there's always this... this, this uh, 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 the, the moment we have a difference... We need to get out of the church. We need to break relationship because we're not allowed to fellowship any longer. Because, and we need to break relationship and there all the hurt is coming from. Mm. They say the average believer can go three times out of a church and then they will be never again involved in any church and they are never again be of any good in the kingdom of God. They will just sit at home and say this thing is worth nothing, you know, and... But luckily there's always people coming in. It's interesting that the, that the only flourishing churches are the churches where the, where the senior pastor is an evangelist. Mm. Why? Because the evangelist is constantly bringing in new believers. New believers. But look at the back door. They're going out there at the, the same speed. Why? Three to five years they're out at the back door. Why? Because what? something is not working here. Somehow something is not working and we must become honest with ourselves. So, so we are not here to, let's say, to touch the body, to against, against the body. I mean, I absolutely respect the people that form the body of Jesus Christ. Uh, 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 there's no question about it. I've gotten, although I differ from them and we are different and whatever, you know, I have no, nothing in my heart against them, even though whatever they believe in or not believe in. But the things we are doing as leaders in forming churches and, and structures that we say is God's plan to reach the world, I don't agree with that thing. That thing. Yes, there's beautiful people there. That's why I often also attend some churches. Why? Because I find the people there. The beautiful people is there. But I don't always agree with the thing they're doing there. But I'm not here to criticize them. I'm not here to, you know, you go into the positive relational thing. And you build the relationship with the people at the end of the day. Okay. So, so here is a list of things that, we, that I say, you know, I remember when I, uh, I typed this thing, I said to myself, okay, let's just, let's just summarize the five things, you know, that, that makes church wrong, you know. Uh, so we end up with not five, we end up with two pages. <laughs> and, and, and again, remember, it is not the people, it is the thing. The way we structure the people, the way we, we put them in an institutionalized system, that is what church is all about. 
Congregation is people that's hearts is flowing towards each other. That is congregation. I am absolutely fanatical about congregation and congregation life. Because that is, that is, not, the, that is not the plan. That is the strategy. That's very important. Congregation is not a plan. The plan is kingdom. The plan of God is to live in you and influence through you as an individual believer. But the strategy is that all these people can flow together in some way where the head just orchestrate every one of us into a bigger unity, in a corporate unity in the town and in the, in the country and in the city. And no one needs to organize it. You just need to do what the, what the head is telling you to do and you do what the head is telling you to do and we will be in total harmony. And yes, I can organize something that I'm doing at the moment, giving a training or whatever. You can do it also. But I must be sure not to do anything to harm your kingdom and to keep you busy in my world. But, and all, everything I, I must do is to help you to be more effective in what God has told you to do. And, and then eventually everything will flow together. I mean, we have a, 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 what I call a real congregation. You can read it on my internet. Uh, David Watson started up a, a congregation in, in the, the most difficult part they could find on earth, there in, uh, under the Bochapuri people in, in India. I mean, you know, it's a long story. You know, but they are more or less, a, nowadays, a congregation of 9 million people with no official... Um, Leader, no official leaders, no official buildings, no official structure, no official uh, uh, confession or nothing. I mean, except for the Bible, the, the, the whole congregation of 9 million people have only one paper of, 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 that constitutes everything of church. And in one, that paper you will only find 25 chapters of the Bible. That's all. That's the whole thing. And it works so well that there are 9 million people in the most worst case scenario in the world that you can think of. You know, and then we in the West, we are very clever and say, yeah, but it's Western, it's third world, or whatever, you know, doesn't work here, so, well, well, you know. Listen, maybe not all the things work the same, yes, but it, it's same people, it's same God, it's same kingdom. And all they're doing is they, 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 they refrain from keeping building anything that's outside of the, 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 the uh, uh, office of the believer that must stand up and live his congregation life and keep his, his congregation together and do his part in the kingdom. They are refraining from that. They don't keep people busy in anything except they send them back to their world, their kingdom, their house, their congregation to do the thing. And yet they flow together. And yet the, the relationship in that amongst those 9 million people is keeping them together. You don't need a name to keep it together. You don't need a leader to keep it together. You don't need a vision to keep it together. The vision is already in the Bible. The vision is the kingdom and to take the kingdom to other people. I mean, that's it. You don't need to find another vision. Yes, and maybe the vision can be implemented by you through a soup kitchen and I believe in training and she believes in art, you know. God doesn't worry whatever you do because wherever you are and you flow through your gift and there's a flow of life through your heart to another person and the reason why the people are there are because of art, it's fine. Then we have congregation together because congregation is the flow of life, the flow of life. You must never hinder the flow of life. And all the things we've started up is hindering the flow of life. You cannot do a ministry, you must apply. You must put it on paper and then we as leaders will, will look to it. We as leaders will tell you, you can do this, you cannot do this, you know. No. It's the same thing with the economy. The more you regulate the economy, the more the economy goes down. Do you remember that the, big, that the economy with the biggest blow after the World War II was, was Germany? They were back on ground level. They were, they were out, down and out. And after three years, they were the second biggest com uh, uh, economy in the world. Do you know how they did it? They took off all regulations. All regulations. They just told people, whatever business you want to do, however you, how you want to do it, you just do it. And the initiative in the individual people was so big that in three years' time, the corporate 
together of those initiatives was bigger than the, the second biggest in the world. Yet they were far back, you know. Because the initiative and the plan and the thing is that the, the life is in you. And God wants His life to through you and He doesn't want to put rules and regulations around you. He wants you to flow, to go, 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 go. Flow, visit, you know, share. You know, don't think out, you know, we, we think out so many ministries and how to do the ministry thing that we just kill everything. We kill the flow of life. Because it needs to be through this book and this way and this, this sentence, you know, and this terminology and... You know, at the end of the day, it's, it sounds so good, you know, but we're actually building a franchise. Because in the business world, a franchise works very well, but not with people. People are different. Mm -hmm. You will give different expression to, me, to what, what... You can hear everything I say here. You can take all these notes and give it to another person. It will be different. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're not me. Mm -hmm. But it's just supposed to be like that. That is the strength of the body. Is that there is a versatility and a, diff and, a, and a beauty in all this variety that's there. Because some people connect to me, but other people connect to your way of explaining the thing. And that's the beauty of the thing. And so whatever, that's why I say whatever is here, you can take it. You can rewrite it. You can re-whatever it. Because you must re-it in terms of your life because you are not me. Uh, but that is the strength of the body, is that there's so many people. And, the, and I tell you, and I'm saying a very dangerous thing, but the biggest problem we have in this country is not our government. The biggest problem we have in our country is church. Because church is keeping the solution busy to be the solution. Jesus is the solution, but he's in the believers, but the believers is not taking it to the world. They're not taking it into the economy and the arts and the wherever you know. They, they're more busy, they spend so many times in this church systems that they are not spending it where they need to spend it. And we can have another government and another government, I tell you, will not change this world. The only thing that will change it is when the people that have the kingdom in them go into the world, into the lives of the unbelievers and the politicians and the business people and start to have a new influence there. That is the only solution. Nothing else will change. There's no other way. That's God's plan. And we have enough believers in this country to do it. But they're not doing it. They think they're doing it because they say, I'm part of a church. You know, I'm very active in my church. But you're not called to be very active in the church. You're called to be active in your kingdom. And to and let, it, let your kingdom come as in heaven, so on earth. Okay, let's just quickly go through, you know, what is exactly wrong with church. You know, that sounds very awkward. Um, the, the word is never used in the Bible. There's no command to plant the church. Um, there's no suggestion that the church must sort of grow uh, hear me clearly, the definition of church is there is one Pretoria with 2,000 churches currently. But congregation says there is one Pretoria with one congregation. A congregation is never bigger than a local community, but it's never smaller than a local community. Church has divided congregation into smaller units, and that is the problem. And we rule over those smaller units, we keep them busy. We accommodate, you know, we, 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 we cut them off. We're not supposed to cut them off. We must, we must chase them away to go. You know, but we say to them, okay, come, and then, you know, you must now go. But they don't go. They just go home, you know. And the next week they come again. We've got a, we've got a, 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 a gospel that is in itself, you know, it's not come and go, come and go. It's go, go, go. You never come. You know, when we see each other, whatever, you know, it's fine, you know, but, that, that, but that's not the plan to come. The plan is never to come. The plan is, you know, sometimes we'll come to each other. But the plan is always to go, to go, to go, and on the go we will fellowship. The Christians will always fellowship with each other. You know, since when? People say, but the Bible says you must not, uh, you must not neglect the, 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 uh, the, gathering, of the, the gathering of of the saints. Of the saints. But since when does the gathering of saints mean it's a Sunday service? I mean, come and visit me is also a gathering of the saints. We can be two or three people. It's also a gathering of the saints. The most effective group in the world, proven, proven, 
Nothing to do with, 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 with Christianity, religion or what. The most effective group is a group of three people. Mm. It's the most effective group to grow. The, uh, it's, it's a group of three people. In a group of three people you have, you have uh, six relational channels. That's already a lot of channels. Six relational channels. The moment you become four, you must go, you must, you must go back to two so that you can grow to three. It's the fastest growing group, it's from 2 to 3, when it becomes 4, you go back to 2, then you grow to 3. That is, that is, that is the heart of the gospel. About 80% people get to know the Lord through a personal one-to-one -one relationship with another believer. Now if that is the most effective thing, because that is God's plan, why do we not build on that? I mean, that is the most effective thing, people... It's about 20% people that get to know the Lord through meetings and, and whatever. Mm -hmm. But if we, can, if we can make more use of the one-to-one -one thing and we can mobilize everyone, it can be much more effective. Uh, church has become a separate third system. It competes with the time and the energy of the other. It, it consumes uh, a lot. Building, salary, system, program, services. You need at least a million rand for every thousand believers that you have in the church. That is the average. You need a million a month for every thousand believers that you have in the church to, to, to keep that thousand believers busy. Right? You, need, you need one full-time person for every 20 members of a church to make that church a vibrant church of that people can feel there's something, there's some vibe around here. That's, that's, you can go through every mega church, you will find the same figures, I can promise you. Uh, I've studied it. Uh, doesn't matter if it's whatever the name is, the name is irrelevant. It, it is human sociological dimensions that we're talking about. Uh, church makes you part of an organization, God makes you part of a kingdom. Church makes you a member, God makes you a king. Church is controlled by men, church is... Uh, 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 um, uh, it's controlled by men and, and demand submission from them. Uh, building the church is a system, uh, and that's to become the main goal why we must build the kingdom. Churches make us members while we are citizens of a kingdom. Churches entertain a lot while God wants to activate you, so that you become uh, 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 activated in your own kingdom. Churches make you volunteer for service while God says you're a king and you must become a minister of the word. You're not a volunteer. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a biblical thing, a volunteer. You are a minister of the word, of the, of the gospel of reconciliation. Um, churches started by a person that's a senior pastor, that's got a vision, give it to the people, while God says, I talk directly to any, every person in my kingdom. Uh, churches focus on the gospel of salvation, kingdom focus on the gospel of the kingdom. Church makes you settle down, kingdom activates you. Church is a program, kingdom is a lifestyle. Church keeps you busy with good things, the king keeps you busy with the, the, the things of the king. Uh, church wants to take you to heaven, God wants to keep you on earth. Uh, in church, man has the final decision, while in the kingdom, God has the final decision over your life. Uh, the church is a business system, it's determined by money. Because if the money is not there, we cannot have the system and all the programs that's part of the system. That does not make the money or the program or the building evil. Nothing. It's nothing evil. It is, the evil does not lie in the thing. The evil lies in the way we have organized it together. I always tell people, you know, I know a, peop I know a guy that's the owner of a motor parts uh, business. But when he closed down tonight, he cannot, he cannot drive with that parts home. Why? Because it's only parts, it's not a car. The parts need to come in relationship with each other. You need to have a body and the wheels need to be at the right place, the engine. All the parts need to come to in a relationship with each other to have a car. You see, it is not the parts that's the problem, it is what is the relationship between them. You can have all those parts, you know, church is sometimes like you, you park all the parts of the kingdom in the service, you know. Then we have all the parts there, but we don't have movement because they are not in relationship with each other. It is the relationship with each other that makes, brings the movement. 
it is not telling all the parts how beautiful they are, you know, and how perfect they are, because they are perfect and beautiful, but they need to come to their right place. You get the wheel where the wheel needs to get, needs to fit. Not for the program of the church, for reaching, because the mission of the kingdom is reaching those that are not part of the kingdom. That's the mission. The mission is not building something with the believers. Okay. Um, I always say, you know, also, when you have this, let's say all this material, before this house was here, all this material was on the outside. You know, then someone built this thing and we say, oh, wonderful, look at this beautiful house. You know, but you could have built a, 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 a chicken, place for chickens. You could have built a tower with this material. The point is not the material. The, how do you organize this material relationally to each other? Because a chicken shed will not sleep as well as an house. But it's the same material. You can use the same material. You see, the point is, what is the, what is the relational thing uh, between all of this? And, and in the church, there's always a lack of money. Uh, it's dedicated by money. Uh, the focus is on the building. And the, and the pastor, you and the, the, the leaders can be a nuisance. They always want to focus on them. I'm an apostle. I'm apostle this and a prophet this. Listen, I believe in apostles and prophets and in a fivefold ministry. But listen, if you call yourself that, I tell you. Uh, if you ask me what I am, I'll tell you. You know, but I, it is not a positional title. It's not to be a title. You know, but if you are inferior, you want to say to people, I am an apostle. If you are an apostle, you know, do, do, do you know, how do you know you're an apostle when other people recognize it without you saying anything? You never say even what you are. People will know what you are. I mean, uh, don't, go, I don't want to go into that thing now. A church is built on different doctrines. Uh, kingdom is built on fatherhood. Church can be exclusive. It needs to become inclusive. Church is spiritual. Kingdom is everything on earth. Uh, a church creates the compartments uh, while kingdom binds things together. A church breeds competition, but kingdom completes each other. Uh, a church is an external system while congregation is an is a, is a internal flow of life. Uh, churches try to get power and control over communities by building denominational structures, and that is not what God really wants us to do. Okay. So, maybe this sounds negative, as I said in the beginning, but the point is, you know, we don't touch the body of Christ. This, the body of Christ is the bride of Christ, it's perfect, it's wonderful, we need to deal with her, we need to honor her, we need to whatever, but we cannot always agree with everything that especially the leaders in the body of Christ strive to do, because the main thing in the body of Christ is that we, we do the church thing. But the church thing is a very much a religious thing. Although not everything in church is religion. For sure not. I've seen churches really where there are people that have got good relationship. But the problem is we all want to let the church grow. And the moment the church grow, you grow the relationship out of the door. Because you, you, now we are a thousand people. You, you see a thousand people every Sunday. You cannot have a relationship with everyone. You get confused. You, you get sort of so thin in your relational aspect, you know, that you don't have those three, four, five, six people that you have definite, deep, good relationships with, that you're supposed to have in terms of congregation life. But we get exposed to so many people, you know, and you know, we know, later on knows hundreds of people, you know, but we don't know each other. Uh, at once, one of, one of my leaders told me, you know, he said to me, you know, I am your leader. You know, I said, but how can you tell me you're, you're my leader, you know? I mean, it takes me seven months to get a 10, 10 minute appointment with you. Uh, now you tell me you're a leader. I mean, you are a leader. I mean, of course you are a leader. You are a beautiful leader. I mean, that's not the point, but you are not my leader. Because you are not in my life. I mean, and, 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 it's not that you must be in my life, because you are not now in my life, and that's fine. You know, but let's get honest with each other, you know. Don't come with this thing, I'm your leader, you know. I mean, I'm your brother. <laughs> We are nothing more than brothers in the, same, in the same family. And yes, you've got your part and my part, you know, and we can be together and whatever, you know, but 
But let's stop this thing where we're constantly looking for a place where I am bigger than you and over you and whatever you, you know, and, and this one must submit there and that one there and, and it all, always and ever creates a fight and a disunity and a whatever. In the meantime, let's leave all these things to the head. You know, the head of the body can solve these things much better than you can think of. It's not my responsibility, it's his responsibility. My responsibility is to love you, to help you, to support you, to be honest with you when there's something that's maybe wrong. Yes, but I do not have control over you. As a five-fold minister, I never have control over you or authority over you, but maybe in your life if you, if you give me permission. The fact that you sit here, you give me permission to speak into your life. I only have it because you've given it to me for a certain time. But when you walk out here, you take it with you. I'm not your, I'm not your leader. I am a leader, but I'm not necessarily your leader, you know. I'm just a father figure. You are also a father figure. Whatever we do, we do with the heart of the father. And we, 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 we help people to get to understand the heart of the father. Nothing else. And call no one your father. Because you cannot call me your father. I'm not your father. <laughs> God is your Father. You know, I've got the Spirit of the Father in me, but I am not your Father. Whatever I do is supposed to be with the Spirit of a Father, but I am never your Father, and you are never anyone else's Father, except, you know, when, you, when it's your biological son and daughter, then you are the Father and the Mother. Um, that's true. Father, we thank you that we can be honest about what is working and what's not working but knowing also that that will bring us by something better, that is the real thing that works better and that will bring us to a place of more unity and more fruit. In Jesus' name, Amen.